Welcome back everyone to the third and final video about Shadow Puppets and the conclusion of Elodie's adventure. You may remember that Elodie packed a picnic and went up in her balloon to scatter wildflower seeds around her house. A storm came and blew her across the ocean. A shark tried to eat her basket, but she used pepper from her picnic basket to make the shark sneeze and let go. Then her balloon was struck by lightning and crashed somewhere near the North Pole. She found a lost polar bear. When she saw Santa flying in the distance, she thought, if we can get to Santa's house, we can ask him for help. And just as they set on their way, a yeti leaped out of nowhere. So now the story needs an ending. Now there are lots of different kinds of stories, and there are lots of different ways to end a story. I like it when endings take all the details from a story and bring them back around and tie them neatly together. You might remember that in the last video, the Hunt family had suggested that in the beginning, Elodie could plant her seeds, and then the rain comes, and then in the end, she sees that the wildflowers have grown from all the rain. And I think that's nice to start with seeds and end with flowers. So I have to get Elodie from the scene with the Yeti and the lost polar bear and the broken balloon back to her house where she can see her wildflowers. So let's see. So maybe Elodie and Flower can run back to where the balloon has crashed and Elodie can grab her picnic basket and throw it toward the Yeti. And maybe it would be funny if the Yeti ran past it but then but then came back into the frame because the Yeti really does want to see what's in that picnic basket. And I can cut to a clip of Elodie running away and then cut back to the Yeti who's now sitting and eating a sandwich out of Elodie's picnic basket. So Elodie and Flower are going to have to find another route to Santa's house so they can avoid the Yeti. I had this idea that it would be fun if they could sled to Santa's house, so I'll have them walk up a hill. I was trying to think of something that Elodie and Flower could use as a sled, and then I thought, maybe the shark. Maybe the shark, when it fell off the balloon, it didn't fall into the ocean. Maybe it fell on top of this hill. And when Elodie and Flower get up there, they see the shark and they say, what are you doing here? And then the shark explains, I don't know, I was trying to eat this basket and then the next thing I knew I was flying through the air and then I was falling and I landed here. So the shark needs help getting back to the ocean and Elodie thinks, well, I'm sure Santa will know what to do. And so they climb on the shark and they sled down the hill on the shark and come right up to Santa's door. So then Elodie explains everything to Santa, and of course Santa does know just what to do, and they fly the shark back over the ocean and drop the shark in. So then Santa reunites Flower and Flower's mother. Santa probably knows all the polar bears at the North Pole. And then maybe Elodie gets to have her picnic at last with Santa. And like Jesse had suggested, they can have tea and cake and other sweet things, and they can fix up Elodie's balloon in Santa's workshop and she can fly home. We'll have Santa waving goodbye when Elodie gets... Well, you know what? Actually, we should have the Yeti waving goodbye to Elodie also. So Santa and the Yeti are waving goodbye to Elodie. And then Elodie flies home, and when she gets there, she sees all the wildflowers have grown, and she walks back inside her house. Now I'm ready to start making the puppets I need. I can use the same Yeti puppet for the scene where the Yeti is eating one of Elodie's sandwiches, but I'll make a different hand. This one will be holding a sandwich. Paper shadow puppets are very easy to modify. Now I'll save this hand and make it reattachable so I can change it out with the sandwich hand. I cut out the sandwich hand with a tab on it and I'll make a little sleeve that's the right size for that tab. I'll carefully glue down that envelope
another tab onto the original hand so I can use either one. Now I think a Yeti having a picnic would be smiling, so I'll cut a smile onto the Yeti. And it would be nice to see the Yeti chewing. part of the mouth has a long tab on it, and I'll make a sleeve that will fit that. So by sliding it up and down, sandwich. The Yeti will be sitting down on the ground, so this piece of cardboard will be the snowy ground, and if I put the Yeti's legs behind it, you won't see them in silhouette, so I'll make new legs in the sitting position. Sometimes when you need to cut out something very detailed, it's a matter of having patience to slow down as much as you need to, to get all those details. so the Yeti can relax and enjoy the sandwich. And there's the picnic basket too. mother, I think I'll just need to make the head and neck and maybe the shoulders of an adult polar bear. clean their cubs by licking them, so I thought I would make a tongue for the mother polar bear. That might be an affectionate way for a mother polar bear and a cub to be reunited. And now when I slide this in and out, the mother polar bear can lick flour, but I want the controller to be hidden behind the head and neck, so I'll attach a lever to it. Sometimes shadow puppets use translucent material so you can see colors on the screen. I thought I would see if colorful food wrappers would work to make colorful wildflowers. I noticed something interesting. When I hold the wrapper close to the screen, you can see the red on the other side. But when I move the wrapper away from the screen and closer to the light source, it becomes more opaque. I wonder if I could use that for something later. Here's something else I noticed. This wrapper had a reflective inside, and I thought I would try reflecting the light off the wrapper and onto the screen. I'll direct the lamp straight onto the wrapper so that it bounces off the wrapper and up onto the screen. Maybe if Elodie has another adventure where she goes underwater or goes into outer space, I can use this effect. But anyway, back to the flowers. I'll use the food wrappers, and tissue paper works well too. I'll make 
the center of the flower opaque and the stem opaque, and I'd like there to be some separation between the center of the flower and the stem. So I'll cut out a piece of clear plastic from this bottle. that to attach the center of the flower to the stem. And now when Elodie flies home, she'll see all the colorful wildflowers. And now we're ready for the whole show. I want to say thank you to the Palmer Public Library, thank you to everyone who sent in ideas, and thank you for watching. I hope you enjoy Elodie's Adventure.
Thank you.